I welcome you all in this uh, presentation related with the subject fundamentals of surface engineering. And in the last presentation, we have talked about the classification of the various surface modification techniques, wherein we have seen that there are there are three broad categories of the surface modification processes. Like one category belongs to the processes where no change in chemical composition is used, but only the structural changes near the surface and surface layers is brought in by the various processes like uh, induction hardening, flame hardening, laser hardening or the plasma hardening. Then there was another category of the processes where the change in chemical composition of the surface and near surface layer is uh, used to achieve the required uh, properties and, uh, and the functionalities of the surfaces. And uh, the processes which uh, fall in this category includes like carburizing or uh, nitriding, cyaniding, vanadizing, chromizing, and uh, then laser cladding, uh, uh, sorry, laser alloying uh, was an, another process. And uh, uh, then uh, there was a third category of the processes where uh, a layer is built up onto the surface of the component in order to achieve the required set of the properties. And the processes uh, um, like uh, uh, the uh, coatings, like development of coating and films through uh, the use of uh, uh, thermal spray processes, welding overlays, then mechanical methods like uh, accumulative roll bonding and uh, uh, explosion bonding etc. So, there were so many other processes. So, um, if we see each of these processes will uh, be uh, using the different kind of principle and accordingly uh, the complexities and control over the processes will be different. So, that is what we have seen like the kind of technology level which is associated with the, these processes uh, which are used for surface modification technique and the kind of complexities involved with those processes they are uh, uh, different and they will, uh, will keep on changing from one process to another. Simplest processes like the mechanical method where burnishing, short pinning kind of methods are used for a surface modification and very complex processes where uh, surface films are made using processes like uh, physical vapor uh, deposition and the chemical vapor de deposition. And there is a range of the processes in between uh, which are used uh, to modify the surfaces uh, to get the required set of the process properties and these processes will have the intermediate level of the technology as well as the process complexity um, associated with them. Now, uh, since the each process uses the different kind of the technology and uh, different kind of control systems and therefore, uh, the capability of the each process is found to be different. So, uh, if you have to s compare the different processes, then we need to have certain factors based on which we can compare the capability of the surface modification techniques like the one uh, the point which can be there uh, can be used to compare the different processes based on their capability to handle the kind of material that they can process for surface modification. Uh, for example, few materials can uh, work only with the high temperature metals few uh, with uh, will be uh, eligible for surface modification of the low uh, temperature uh, metals which means ability of the metal to withstand at a high temperature or low temperature during the surface modification. Because during the surface modification especially there are some methods which will be generating too high temperature in course of the surface modification like melting will also be facilitated. But there are other processes where um, very low temperature is uh, raised uh, for the surface modification because temperature is one of the important points because uh, whenever there is the temperature is high then it leads to the changes in uh, uh, metallurgical properties of the material and which in turn can affect the base material properties also. So, uh, what is expected from the surface modification techniques is that the rise in temperature of the base metal is as minimum as possible so that the related thermal damages to the substrate are minimum. So, the different processes will have the capability to handle the different kind of the metal systems. So, whether they can handle the low melting point metals or the high melting point 
metals and accordingly the extent of damage um, on the material properties uh, will be determined. The second aspect is their uh, ability of the uh, different processes with regard to their uh, uh, capacity to um, uh, modify the surfaces. So, uh, what is the extent of, uh, what is the size of the components that they can handle, what is the area which can be modified a particular process, uh, like what kind of thickness a process can work in and what is the extent of modification. Uh, with regard to the depth from the surface is possible. We have seen that different processes allow the different degree of the alteration in properties with, uh, as far as the surface depth which is modified by the different processes is concerned. So, uh, like there are certain processes which will be able to uh, modify very small area like the processes which are uh, basically high energy density based like laser or electron beam, uh, they can be used for uh, modifying the surface uh, properties uh, of somewhat smaller areas as compared to those which are used for like uh, the flame and uh, induction hardening. Flame and induction hardening really can cover the larger areas as compared to the laser and uh, electron beam. Similarly, uh, surface modification using PAW will be somewhat over a, a smaller area as compared to that of the submerged arc welding processes for uh, using the weld surfacing approach. So, as per the process, uh, they will be able to uh, uh, handle or they will be able to modify the surface properties of the component of the different sizes, different areas, different thicknesses and different depths. Uh, for example, we will take another example like um, to use the mechanical methods component has to be rigid and uh, robust enough otherwise uh, uh, there will be chances for distortion and damage to the component itself in course of the surface modification through the mechanical methods. Similarly, uh, low energy density processes uh, for example, flame hardening or uh, uh, like uh, gas welding or acid uh, W welding processes. Uh, these processes uh, cannot be used for a surface modification of very thin sheets because these will be uh, they, these will increase the tendency of the melt through kind of condition. So, and they will, they will be causing um, the greater tendency for the distortion of the components also. So, uh, with regard to the size, area and thickness, uh, the different process will have the different capabilities. Uh, same, same is true for the depth also, the, the depth up to which surface is modified that varies with the kind of process. Uh, uh, for example, uh, like chemical vapor deposition, physical uh, uh, vapor deposition, these are the processes which can modify very thin layer of less than like say uh, in the range of 1 to 5 micrometer. Then there is a ion implantation ion implantation method uh, which can modify the depth uh, even less than 1 micrometer. Uh, while on the other hand uh, the weld surfacing methods can be used to modify the surfaces or and can have the modified surfaces up to the depth of uh, like 2 to 5 mm also. So, greater thicknesses can be achieved using one category of the methods while other uh, kind of methods can, uh, um, can modify. Uh, can uh, modify and develop the surfaces up to the uh, oh, a very smaller uh, and a very less depth. Uh, then there is uh, another point based on which different processes can be uh, carried out like some of the processes which can be um, executed only under the control conditions. Uh, for example, electron beam, it needs, uh, it usually needs the vacuum. Uh, similarly, the laser uh, kind of processes, they also can be carried out only at the shop floor. If the modification is to be carried out in the site, at the site then it will be difficult to use such kind of methods. So, depending upon the complexity of the process, process controls and the environment in which it can be used to modify the surfaces, decision is taken like which kind of process we should go for and that will be based on whether the modification by a particular approach can be carried out at the site or it needs to be done only at the shop. Uh, so, 
uh, as per the process uh, the suitable kind of uh, um, approach is uh, selected. So, the different processes will have the different kind of capability few can be used at the site and others can be used uh, at the under the control conditions of the SOP itself. Uh, then uh, uh, as I have said that the different uh, um, approaches are based on the different principles. So, uh, if you use the uh, mechanical stresses for controlled deformation, others use the like uh, you know, the controlled heating followed by rapid cooling uh, under the thermal methods, if you use the compositional modification uh, at a high temperature uh, and if you use melting others use diffusion as well for modifying the surface composition. So, since the principles uh, underlying principles associated with the different processes are different and um, therefore, the kind of the damage which will be taking place to the component uh, substrate like the component which is being modified is termed as substrate. So, because of these stresses and uh, the heating and uh, the melting uh, what is the extent up to which it changes in the properties of the substrate itself uh, itself is taking place that must be considered and what is the objective uh, the component whose surfaces are being uh, modified using suitable process the underlying base metal or substrate should not be much affected because of the changes which are being experienced by the component during the surface modification. So, there should not be any major change in the mechanical corrosion and other tribological properties of the uh, component uh, uh, because any uh, alteration or undesirable effect on these uh, uh, properties it will be leading to the reduction in performance of the base metal or substrate of the component itself. So, that should be avoided otherwise this can lead to the premature failure of the component despite of the surface modification because surface modification will simply be improving the properties of the surface and uh, through the proper improvement in properties of the surfaces life is improved and uh, the functionalities are also improved. But if the base metal uh, properties are compromised uh, then it can adversely affect the life of the component also. Uh, another important point uh, based on which the different processes can be compared is the kind of finish which is offered by these uh, processes mm, like short pinning burnishing these uh, produce very rough surface uh, while uh, there can be uh, mm, uh, physical vapor deposition, chemical vapor deposition and um, uh, like um, weld surfacing each process offers the different uh, kind of the surface roughness or surface smoothness. So, those processes which offer the good surface finish obviously, they will be preferred because they may not be requiring uh, much uh, post processing for improving the surface finish of the component. But most of the um, uh, in most of the cases modified surfaces result in the somewhat uh, poor um, surface uh, finish uh, like processes like uh, induction heating may be offering the good surface uh, induction hardening may be resulting in the very good uh, surface finish as compared to the mechanical methods like uh, burnishing and uh, the rolling or as uh, the short pinning. Uh, so, uh, different processes can be compared with regard to the uh, surface roughness which is uh, offered by the processes um, after the surface modification. Uh, now, uh, another uh, important point based on which different processes can be compared is the kind of control which uh, is there uh, for uh, for altering the properties of the surfaces. Few processes like carburizing offers very Con poor control over the conditions because the, the sample to be carburized is kept at a high temperature of 800 to 900 degree centigrade for say 30 minute to uh, uh, 1 hour and then uh, the carbon rich environment will be diffusing the carbon inside the sample. But uh, since the temperature conditions in the different zones can vary and accordingly it will be diffusing to the different uh, depths uh, because temperature directly affects the rate of diffusion. So, 
what will be the extent of the modification uh, in the in this kind of process that uh, uh, that uh, is not very well controlled in case of carburizing methods like solid carburizing or uh, the gas carburizing as compared to the liquid carburizing so there are some other methods where uh, we good we have very good control over the um, over the conditions under which the uh, processing or surface modification is taking place for improving the properties. So, if the control is good, we will have control over the kind of alteration which is taking place at the surface and that will be leading to the uh, requirement uh, required surface properties for a requisite uh, improvement or uh, required performance of the surfaces for long life of the component. Uh, the last point which is not uh, which is although important but it is not technical in nature is the kind of initial investment which is needed to have the system for surface modification kind of system which is available also and expertise which is needed certainly is uh, important. So, uh, like uh, this uh, very cheapest uh, methods which require very minimum possible uh, investment is like burnishing mechanical methods uh, short pinning thereafter we have short short pinning uh, then uh, very costly methods are like uh, uh, then we have the laser uh, surface modification approaches where laser is used or electron beam um, uh, surface modification approaches uh, and the costly methods are also like uh, chemical vapor deposition and uh, physical uh, vapor uh, deposition. So, these are very costly affairs as compared to the other methods which uh, require somewhat uh, uh, less investment and these uh, processes also these processes although have very good control over the properties good control over the processes as compared to the other processes. Uh, so, uh, so these are some of the points based on the which uh, different uh, surface modification processes can be uh, compared with regard to their capability and the kind of investment which is uh, required in terms of the funds which are required for having the setup and the kind of expertise which uh, they will be using. Uh, so, after looking uh, into the various uh, uh, surface modification techniques, their classification and their capabilities, now we will try to see as a whole the entire scope of the surface engineering, what does it include and what are the different things under the surface engineering are carried out. So, if we see uh, th this is basically a, a loop kind of situation where uh, which starts with the designing the surface modification which is required then uh, then it is about the development of the modified surfaces and those modified surfaces are thereafter checked or characterized so characterization of the modified surfaces to see if the required design properties have been realized or not and if if uh, the results are expectation after the characterization we simply put the, the designed uh, surface properties uh, which are realized through the required uh, development uh, through the surface modification techniques it is subjected in application or application it is applied in the real component. So, we follow this path first of all designing the surface modification then development of the surface modified surfaces and once these are developed then these are characterized and investigated to have the required set of the properties followed by their application into the real component. And if uh, if these uh, are uh, as per expectation means after the application if you are getting the expected result the entire process is standardized and if we do not get then again we go back to the design stage this is a kind of cycle. So, in light of this uh, the scope of the surface engineering includes the four aspects designing the surface which is to be developed for a given application. So, that the required performance in terms of the life in, term, in terms of the functionalities can be achieved. The second aspect is development or the modification using the suitable kind of the material and the process which can be used for achieving the required or the designed surface properties. 
So, what uh, uh, which method and which material will be used uh, for modifying the substrate using the suitable approach that is what is identified in the second stage and third stage is about investigation or characterizing the engineered or modified surface to see up to what extent the designed properties have been achieved. If they have been achieved then the things will be put into use through the application of the uh, required design properties or required surface modification. So, putting the uh, surface modification into the real application for so that the required purpose can be realized and if you find the required target results then this process is standardized and if we do not get then we will be going back at the design stage. So, these are the four important components and uh, now we will be looking after one by one each of the components and uh, in this uh, uh, subject also we will be focusing these aspects uh, one by one where we will be looking for what kind of surface properties we should have to deal with the various kind of various kinds of the applications so that the required functionalities and performance can be achieved. Second one we will be looking for the various materials and the processes which can be used for developing the requ required uh, target properties and uh, we will also be looking uh, after the various uh, investigations and characterization methods which can be used uh, to study the modified surfaces to see their suitability for given application and once uh, all that is done then this process is uh, all these uh, means the surface modification is applied in the real application. So, the next point uh, uh, will be starting uh, with the designing the surfaces to be developed. Uh, we know uh, that the surface modification or surface engineering is carried out for a purpose that purpose is to be identified first what for we are modifying the surfaces whether it is just for improving surface properties so that the uh, uh, surface properties so that the required longer life can be achieved for longer life another purpose uh, of the surface modification can uh, be to to have required properties for given functionality you see the component may not be having at all any kind of uh, such kind of properties so uh, by surface modification we may like to have those properties at the surface so that the required function can be achieved. So, target here is to have the required function and here the target is to increase the life of the component. So, here just simply improvement uh, in the surface properties will help to enhance the life of the component and here uh, in the second uh, uh, approach we will try to have those unique characteristics which are absent in the substrate surface of the substrate. So, those unique characteristics are brought in so that this uh, component can perform the required function. So, in this case the functionality is improved or functionality is ensured. So, the example of this type of coating is like a op development of the optical coatings or development of the steel coatings so that uh, uh, it can really uh, uh, the component can uh, become invisible through the electronic radars through the use of elect uh, steel coating or uh, it, it can be application of the hydrophobic coatings. In case of the hydrophobic coatings, uh, it does not the, the, the water or the liquid will not wet to the surface, it will not sustain to the surface. So, such kind of the coatings are uh, uh, steel coating or the hydrophobic coatings, these will simply be improving the functionality of the component. Otherwise, uh, whenever a component comes in contact with the liquid or with the water, it will be wetting to the surface. So, but when such kind of the coatings are applied, 
the the wetting tendency will be reduced or will be eliminated similarly use of the stealth coating will um, make the uh, aircrafts invisible to the radars of the enemy so uh, now in light of uh, the purpose of the surface modification whether it is just for improving the surface properties or to have those properties which are absent in the substrate but will be brought in through the application of the suitable surface modification so that its functionality is improved based on this purpose we need to uh, we need to identify what we are looking for improving the surface properties or bringing all together new kind of the properties at the surface as per of course as per the requirement these can be electrical properties these can be uh, optical properties or uh, thermal properties so uh, as per the purpose we need to uh, have the suitable combination of the properties for given purpose. So, now if you see how it is designed, surface properties desired for given surface are determined. So, if it is about the improvement of surface properties, Uh, improvement surface properties like substrate will already be having some kind of the properties with regard to the like say hardness, tensile strength, toughness, ductility etc. Uh, but uh, the substrate is not able to really perform uh, the required function under the given set of the loading environment conditions at a, with the given required uh, reliability then in order to improve uh, then in order to have the surface properties in such a way that it can sustain the load environment to offer the required reliability the surface properties are need to be improved. So, if uh, uh, so this is very crucial part as far as the, uh, the, the combination of the properties which are required for a given application those are identified as per the uh, service conditions. So, service conditions will be dictated by the kind of load environment and the kind of reliability which is required for now there can be different situations like uh, we want uh, we want that the adhesive wear resistance is improved. So, for that purpose we need to have the combination of the good hardness toughness and the fatigue resistance uh, and resistance to the thermal softening. So, if these properties are there in a material it will offer the good combination. So, how to have those set of the properties at the surface uh, so that it can really perform uh, for long under the adhesive wear conditions. So, if uh, if it is abrasive wear resistance is to be improved then we will be looking for as per the kind of abrasive wear conditions like low abrasive wear conditions, low uh, where load is limited uh, under, under these abrasive wear conditions may be hardness is the only property which is required. But uh, if uh, the abrasive wear conditions exist in combination with that uh, impact then we need some kind of the toughness also. If uh, the required properties are needed say for the cavitation conditions, if the pro if you are looking for the property surface properties for the cavitation conditions then for cavitation certainly uh, there is a kind of the bubble uh, bursting of the bubbles which will be continuously acting onto the surface. So, we need good toughness not just hardness but the good toughness and uh, maybe sometimes good work hardening capability of the surface. So, we need to have the those surfaces which can offer the required toughness work hardening capability and it remains stable and coherent under the impact condition. So, even sometimes efforts are made to relate it with the uh, 
photic resistance also. So, if the material those uh, those materials which are offering required toughness, work hardening capability, the good fatigue resistance, then it will be showing the good resistance to the cavitation. So, what we can see the properties like hardness, toughness, work hardening capability, fatigue resistance, fracture toughness, all these are uh, uh, all, all these properties are needed for the different kind of the wear conditions. So, which kind of so for each type of wear, each kind of the properties will be uh, each set of the property one unique kind of the set of the properties will be needed and efforts are made to modify the properties of the surfaces accordingly. Uh, now, another aspect is that tribological components are subjected to the different environments and stress conditions. Hence, the requirement for these uh, components to possess varying set of the properties is also changing. The requirements are changing for the required longer life of the components. So, the design stage is very crucial because we have to anticipate the service conditions. Based on the service conditions, we have to identify the properties which will be required for longer function. And once those uh, required properties are identified uh, in the at the design stage, efforts are made to realize those properties subsequently in the second stage of the development or the modification of the surfaces. Now, I will summarize this presentation here. In this presentation, basically, I have talked about uh, different points based on which different surface modification techniques can be compared. And, uh, what are the different things which fall under the scope of the surface engineering. Also, I have talked about uh, the one important aspect in the scope of the surface engineering is designing the surface modification or what we should look for um, uh, at the design stage of the surface engineering. Thank you for your attention.